Listen Like Thieves there from In Excess as featured on their new Greatest Hits album. As featured on the bridge sofa, Michael Hutchins and Tim Ferriss. Welcome, guys. Hi, it's Michael. Hi. Hi. Hello, Sonia. Hi. After 17 years together, a Greatest Hits album, the first one, mm -hmm. tell me this is not the beginning of the end. Hmm. Probably is, actually. <laughs> well, I think the beginning of the end started 17 years ago, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Uh, no, we, we, we could have put one out a while ago. When we added, added it all up, there's quite a lot of songs there. So I guess we had to do it in the end somehow. It's good in a way. It's good because it sort of puts it over there and you go, that's all that. And now we kind of start off again. Yeah, it's kind of the end of an era for us, in, in a sense. You know, we, we kind of... The end of an era. Yes. But that is like a lot of material to sift through for one album. So how did you go about doing it? Numbers. Yeah, basically numbers. We let, let, let the, uh, the audience and the, the people yeah. around the world in the various places where it's being released, because I think yeah. there's like four different configurations. Yeah, there's one South America, Australia, yeah. States and Europe, yeah. Mm. And we just let basically the, the numbers pick what was going to be on the album. Mm -hmm. It's not like what we would consider in many ways... Faves. You know, faves by the band. Um, <clears> because <throat> that probably wouldn't sell any. <laughs> no, there is our favourites on there, of course, but it's, no. it's all just chart hits, you know. So I messed up the rug. Oh, for goodness sake, please. You're going to have to vacuum clean that later. <laughs> exactly. I get in domestic violence, okay? Yeah. Behave. You've also got a new single out, haven't you? Mm -hmm. The Strangest Party. Tell me, first of all, is there any, like, anything behind the title at all? Yeah, it's, I mean, it, it started off as a kind of commentary on the life we lead, lead on this earth, and, you know, and it's really, you're either part of the solution or you're part of the problem, that's sort of what it's about. Yeah. Mm. In many ways it actually pertains to the recording of the song too. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you stand then, part of the problem or the solution? Well, I try to be part of the solution, I suppose. Yeah, yeah I'm the problem, he's the solution. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> okay, well, let's have a quick look at that, The Stranger's Party now. We'll be okay. back right after this. The Stranger's Party. Rubber? A lot of rubber. A lot there. of rubber, yeah. yes. Actually, no leather. No, no animal <laughs> products. No animal products. Honest. Okay. Um, it's green. <laughs> and, and black. How conscious of you. Actually, it's <laughs> getting to the best bit then. Oh, really? Um, <laughs> well, like the bit we can't show or something. <laughs> mm, it's one of those videos that actually looks, it looks great, but probably took like, ages to film one was very boring to make. Well, you can't tell you because it's a lot of it's chroma key and these little miniaturization things. It's make these little houses and stuff. So you're really just sitting around in a blue backdrop all the time, wondering. Think, fingers crossed, it better look right the way I think it looks. So. Yeah, I mean, videos these days are very much blue screen, you know. Yeah, but it was. I mean, the people who worked on it were great because they had worked very long hours doing all kinds of little cuts and stuff till you know the sun came up. Let alone us. I mean, let alone poor old us. Mm. Yeah. We were there to the wee hours as well. Mm. But you get that. It's all right. So after 17 years, mm. what keeps you all talking? What keeps it going? Well, Tim and I are the only ones that actually do talk. <laughs> <laughs> the rest. He said in mock seriousness, yeah. yeah pretty much. Um, <laughs> mock seriousness. <laughs> to know about that. That's um, a new one. Mock seriousness. I can try that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, well, we, we do talk, though. Mm -hmm. We do. We uh, do. We're really different, you know, um, as people. We're pretty... pretty the disparate elements of an excess comprise to make one unique vision. Mm. Cool. It can be very hard to talk to each other sometimes during the day unless we have something to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, you know, uh, I think it works out that way. And also we don't chain each other, you know, we're not... No. Uh, bands tend to break up because they, they're kind of bored with each other's lives, not so much the music. They're bored with each other's, you know, tendencies, you know, whatever. You mm -hmm. know. And, or, or, or or they don't feel like they can move, you know, they can't do anything. And we've never, if anybody wants to do anything in Spain, they're absolutely welcome to, you know. Yeah, it's, that's very true. I mean, you know, this like one... Like me, you know, my solo record's coming out next week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and my double solo album's coming out the week oh, after. <laughs> Carmen Opera's I Fall and Sleep To. Yes. Yeah. Well, you promised me you wouldn't mention that. <laughs> Sorry. But, but well, yeah. I mean, there are the other operas that I don't fall asleep to. <laughs> just it's just that to. one. <laughs> It was a big night the night before, you know. Of course it was. Right. Okay. Bullfighting never turned me on much anyway. Mm. So, oh, that was the wrong opera. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Moving swiftly on. <laughs> so does this mean then that in terms of the film projects and solo projects, then you do, you know, you do definitely keep them going as well? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's important. I mean, we all need to feel like there is life outside of something we've been involved with since we were children. Uh, you know, it got to a point, in fact, just after we made the album Kick, where it was like. 
all we knew was a life spent, you know, in, in a various mode of transport with our, yeah. you know, and on stage, and we felt, well, you know, what, there's got to be something else to it, ourselves in this, and if we hadn't had the chance to go out and try doing various things, I think it would have been a really dangerous time for the band. And the fact that we did do that created things in the media saying, well, you know, the band's obviously splitting up. Michael's made a thing with Max Q, and Tim's done this, and Kirk's done that, and I mean, you know, it's a bunch of crap, really. You, you just have to, you have to give each other the, um, you know, the room. the room to move. Yeah. Now I've heard tell of a story uh -oh. involving you'll need to get rid of some money by investing in a film. <laughs> Crocodile oh, yeah. Dundee, you mean? Oh, yeah. yeah, well, we found another one just after, which was pretty easy to find. <laughs> we <laughs> really? wasted a lot of money on that one. <laughs> no, first of all, tell me about Crocodile Dundee and, and into the next one. <laughs> yeah, well, it was, it was funny. We thought, you know, Paul Hogan, you know, surely no one overseas, overseas will get it, you know, and we read the script. And actually, I think Michael and Andrew went out to Kakadu National Park to meet up with mm. the crew and stuff. And, you know, it looked okay and harmless yeah, enough. We thought it was pretty funny, we just didn't think it would click. You know? mm. So a good reason to invest in it. And um, it's, it kind of paid off. But, <laughs> <laughs> but then, then, Unfortunately. Then we, so, so then we thought, well, you know, Liz Patterson saves the world. Now, here's one that's bound to make a lot of money. <laughs> 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 Couldn't have been any wrong, <laughs> any further wrong. It, you know. it was cement box but I wish that it one. had. I, I Barry think, Hammers you know, is genius. He is, he is a genius, and I feel mm. sorry that that movie didn't really happen. Mm. I think maybe he was surrounded by the wrong people to make the movie. Maybe. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Now tell me, you, you went on a, 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 a tour of sort of clubs and pubs across Australia mm -hmm. uh, what, last year and stuff. Yes. Was that just a need to get into the feel of playing again in the sort of small spaces of the band? Yeah, or? kind of. I mean, we thought it was kind of perverse logic going from Wembley Stadium down to mm. places that we, we really played for many, many years and, and smaller. And it just, it suited us. It felt right at the time. We'd, we'd um, done two albums in a row and not toured yet. We just wanted to bring it back to the rudiments of everything. I mean, we'd either break up or make up, you know, or at least continue doing a tour like that. We thought as well, you know, really figure out where we are as a band if we, you know, That's right. if we, you know, can survive without a million zillion lights and things like that. And if we can just be the, you know, the, yeah. little, the well, elements. Well, also, you know, you know, did, you know we kind of bypass that on a, on, a, on a world stage thing. You know, in, in Australia, we, we spent so many years playing these these mm. tough places and these little dives and stuff and you know we never really got to show that side of ourselves mm -hmm. around the rest of the world and it was, it was important to us to, to show people that that's our background that's where we came from mm. you know and that's and it was important to to show that so we did it we did it we did it well it's hard to do in america though to be honest it takes a while yeah <laughs> <laughs> kind of a couple of hundred years a lot of space. Yeah. <laughs> So in the light of the Great Sets album then, I mean, you know, you're going to go back to the big stadiums then or carry on sort of like clubs and pubs? Um, I don't know. Well, we, if we can sell enough tickets, I guess we'd go to a stadium for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, we actually, we're not planning on touring for a while at the moment. We, we might do a surprise gig here or there, mm -hmm. but still, again, smaller places because we're having so much fun. We did a, a show in Sweden um, last week mm. uh, at the Cafe Opera and there was a band called uh, Screaming Mothers who opened before us and they did a lot of our songs and they, they did like the best Great. version of Suicide Blonde it was I've ever fantastic. heard. Fantastic. It yeah. was amazing and mm. you know and it was great oh, and cool. then we, we came on and did a few songs after it and the spontaneity of it all was just was really great fun you know and it makes you realize why why you do why you do have fun when you go out there and do it. And, mm -hmm. You know we're, we're going to go and record a new album next year and we probably won't tour till after then. Mm. Mm. I'm so glad you mentioned Suicide Blonde because that's a tenuous link into the video. So I oh, wow. Very much. Gee, I didn't, <laughs> had nothing to do with reading that screen. Now, <laughs> 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 don't give away any more secrets. I mean, to my okay. mic, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you very much. Oh, I pleasure. Luck, but the best of luck with the greatest hits album. I, for thank one, you. have got one. Good luck. Mm -hmm. Suicide Blonde.